we're that much closer to my albums of the year but before we get there let me tell you all about the songs that really shaped my 2019 gave me some really good experiences and sounded beautiful from start to finish the songs that i enjoyed with no interruption nobody can talk me out of liking these songs all right the first one on the list at number 50 is probably going to make a couple of you look at me and go what do you really be doing in your spare time but don't judge me because the first song despite it being from who it's from it's still a bop but i'm not a hater i see things for the enjoyment that i can get out of them and that's it all right so the first track on here is koi Ray with add it all right now listen relax relax i love the energy and I'm, I've become much more of a fan of energy and, 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 and just how much charisma an artist might have over anything else in their music. This shows a lot of energy. I just can't help it. The energy is there. I love the energy, all right? I've listened to the song probably 200 times, but the energy is there. All right, he go down, eat me up like a Lunchable. All right, I, I, don't, I didn't make the lyric. At number 49, I got T Grizzly with Sweet Things. When he start talking that murder talk, don't know what happened, but I heard somebody murky him off. This song is completely from the perspective of a Jack boy, and it's all about hitting licks. And, and I, I don't think I've been more in love with the song throughout the year. I like scriptures a lot, but this song really hit. Aaron Allen Kane with Hummingbird at number 48. Beautiful vocals, uh, great vocalist, great R&B singer from Chicago. Uh, I love the intensity and the rise that this track has. Definitely give it a listen. At number 47, I got Ricky from Denzel Curry. Love this song, love the energy, love the idea, how family oriented it is, how aggressive it can be. At the same time, it still has a very uh, southern feel to it. it still has a very chopped and screwed chorus going on i really just love it 46 is flume how to build a relationship featuring jpeg mafia i love the bop to this track and i love the way jpeg mafia raps over it number 45 is puya with superman you know how much i love this track in the earlier part of 2019 still love it near the end of 2019 the idea being how everything around this man uh, could not break him, but this one person that he was with was his kryptonite, disabling him from being able to think or do anything else. And I just love the idea of it. I love the retro feel of it. Taishi at number 44 with When He's Done, all about a song about a woman giving herself to this person, to this man, hoping that it'll all be enough, only to know in the back of her mind that it's not going to be enough. And he'll take what she gives him and throw it away when he's got it. This isn't the definition of shooting your shot and knowing you're gonna miss. I don't know what is. At number 43, I got Marika Hackman with Come Undone. I love how her voice lends itself to all the choruses, especially a part of her album that came out, Any Human Friend, earlier this year. I loved it. All right, what, what else can I really say? 42, I got Trippy Red with Death. Nigga, you gon' die, all right? I love this song. I like the baby's verse, but Trippy Red really hits me with that you gonna die. I love the crime mob chime inspiration. I also love the 3-6 uh, foundation we got to this track as well. I just think overall it's a great track. At number 41, I got Tylo Yahweh with They Ain't You. I listened to this song pretty much the entire summer in secret. Uh, completely forgot about it near the tail end of 2019, then remembered it again out of nowhere, forgetting that it came out this year. Vocals are pretty great. They don't bust it down like you love. They don't love trap like you love. At number 40, I got Lil Nas X with Old Town Road. Nothing really needs to be said about this song. Easily the biggest song of 2019, in my opinion. Not necessarily my favorite, but I definitely did still enjoy it. At number 39, I got DJ Mustard with the intro of his album, Perfect 10 with One Take J, and I absolutely love this sample underneath the song. One Take J's energy just completely engulfs the entirety of the song. Wait, hold up, I'm finna turn this bitch up. At number 38, I got Out My Way from Juice World. Originally, it was a toss up between this track and The Bee's Knees, but I really like this one a lot. Juice World does in the same track say, they thought I was a bitch because the sad song is just a facade. I love the way he raps when he gets in his aggressive bag. Ah, oh, that's depressing. At number 37, I got DaBaby with Suge. Suge was a single that took over the year 2019. Definitely an intro into the baby or DaBaby for a lot of people. I love the energy here, the consistency, the music video is really fun. And I do think that he should change up his flow soon, but this song is still great. At number 36, I got 21 Savage single with A Lot featuring J. Cole. Absolutely love this song. I love the soul sample heavy vibe in the background. I think J. Cole and people like 21 Savage go perfectly over that. 
um, especially someone like 21 Savage whose vocal style and delivery tends to be much more on the dead side. Uh, having a sample in the background with a ton of soul really helps uh, to act as a nice contrast. At number 35, I got Roddy Rich with Hotbox. This song easily jumped up to my top 50 list because it just came out of nowhere it seemed. The minute I heard this single, I knew it was going crazy. I knew this would be the one. I'm so glad he's uh, getting his recognition right now, but this is definitely one of the best songs I've heard this year. At number 34, I got Quelle Chris with Obamacare. At number 33, I got Lil Sims with Venom. Number 32, I got Coffee with Toast. Absolutely loved this song over the summer. Number 31, I got Post Malone, Take What You Want From Me, featuring Travis Scott and Ozzy Osbourne, who adds an amazing energy to the intro of this song. And the whole song itself is gorgeous whole thing all about being rock stars all about dealing with relationship issues being taken advantage of i think it's fantastic at number 30 i got moses sumney's art pop uh folk fusion with beautiful soul vocals mixed in between called poly track number 29 i got solange with time is easily my favorite track off of when i get home there's a part in the song where her voice seems to bounce the track back and forth between itself almost as if she's playing a game of pong but vocally and i love the surprise uh samfa feature that's also on this track as well track number 28 i got mariah the scientist with beetlejuice and at number 27 i've got dj premier featuring all of Zelda. Absolutely love this track. Completely insane. This is also one of the clearest I've heard them on a track as well. No real cloudy instrumental in the background. No real lo-fi aesthetic too much. They sound really powerful and dominant. Young Thug at number 26 with Ecstasy is easily my favorite song off of So Much Fun. Um, and I've come to like So Much Fun just a little bit more than I first did, but still not too much. But Ecstasy, without the Machine Gun Kelly feature, is great. Tierra Whack Only Child at number 25 is really adorable, heartwarming, and also kind of depressing, but it's uh, it's nice. It's a nice song to listen to. She's really creative and I like it. Y'all remember last year when I told y'all about Sedan Archives, but she comes back again this year with another great single, Confessions. Following up her Sync EP with an album titled Athena, she really does well with this Confessions track. And on the entire album, a lot of it is uh, comprised of violins and live strings. I love the way it sounds. Her voice is really vibrant. It's a highlight, but the instrumentals in the background or the instruments in the background still take a high position in the song. At number 23, I've got Serpent with Feet and Ty Dolla Sign with their track Receipts. I love how both of these guys sound vocally. That's really it. I think they both have beautiful, amazing voices. 22, I've got the bop that is Break Me Off with Ari Lennox. Oh my God, is this song fantastic. Get your, get your yaya when the lice is off. Oh my God, the whole thing. Listen, 21 is Baby Rose or Baby Rose, whatever you wanna say, uh, sold out. The idea of this song being sold out of love, not being able to give any more. I love that concept. I love that process. I love that idea. I don't know why I say concept like that. Oh, no, no. Not being able to give any more is just such a low place to be in, but still hoping for more, not knowing what you want fully, and then all of that confusing you, but it having this beautiful backdrop. I don't know how she did it. Track number 20 is Top Down from Earth Gang. I absolutely love this song. I think it's amazing. The energy is great. The fun in this track is fantastic. Riding through the city, yeah, yeah. Despite what's going on around them, just being able to do what they want in the area that they're from without worry of what's going on in their environment. I absolutely love the premise. I love how much fun they're having. That one of the best parts of this song was how the uh, strings were completely and perfectly placed under Dot's voice. Big Crit released a disappointing album this year, but one thing he did not disappoint on was the song, Make It Easy. I have listened to this single or this song so many times in 2019, I cannot tell you. It's so motivational, it's so inspiring, it's so hopeful. It's so it's so, it's so shrouded and, and, and just drowned out in faith and belief. Strike number 18 is Rico Nasty and Kenny Beats with Big Titties. Zany nature of everybody who gives a performance on this track. It really lends to the idea of just walking around uh, and, and, and just 
eyes literally in cartoon animation style popping out of a character's head looking at some big titties. The random horns are goofy and they're also really appropriate for a track like this as well. They do it now, but I've been did it. Like I love that. Track number 17 is Rich Brian with Yellow. This track was the biggest surprise I think of 2019 because I didn't expect Rich Brian after the performance that he gave last year to hit us with something as beautiful, as intricate and as layered as something like Yellow. I, I was not expecting that one bit. If you don't know who he is, check him out based off this song. If you didn't listen to him anymore based off his performance last year, definitely check out this huge improvement. So much is being told and said about Rich Brian as a person, as a rapper, as a character. And it's almost like he's transitioning from one moment to the next in this own story arc that he's built. And I compared it to him marrying himself almost because it's that beautiful. Track number 16, I've got Tyre the Creator with New Magic Wine. Love this track a lot. I was debating on whether it would be this one, Boy is a Gun, Please Don't Leave Me, like this, this desperation, this desperate attempt to keep someone by your side. I'll do anything. I'll do whatever you ask, whatever you want. Just don't leave me. Tyler goes as far as to threaten the lives of both the person he's interested in and their ex just to prove how much he loves this person. And I think it's insane, but it works so beautifully for this track. 15, I've got Anderson Pac with Make It Better featuring Smokey Robinson, Groove, Soul, and that's it. It's simple. It's simple. Not only was he trying to insinuate and say to this love interest of his, we should stay and make this relationship better, but I feel like it's also a, a homage to originals soul music because without all the extras, it really does make it better to listen to. At number 14, I got Baby Keem with Orange Soda. Shut the fuck up, hey, little bitch. Shut the Singles like Honest and, and this one, Orange Soda, I definitely think he's looking at a bright 2020. At number 13, I've got Yola with Walk Through Fire. This track is literally a vocal if it had legs and walked on hot coal as it makes its way into heaven. It's a country soul mix and I absolutely love it. Yola's vocals are vibrant, strong, and beautiful. They take up so much space and they really resonate. Even when she lowers her tone and goes into a lower register of her voice, I absolutely love it. Track number 12, we've got Brock Hampton with Dearly Departed. I absolutely love the passion, the anger, and the intensity of this track. Golly, I don't know if that's Joba that was singing. I think it was the entirety of the record, the entirety of the song, but it seems like and feels like an old school 70s soul sample that's just crackling in the background. It's smoky everywhere. Everybody's high on something, trying to cope with the pain. Uh, Dom is detailing the betrayal he feels in Amira's absence and after what he did and found out about his friend. We got Matt Champion giving a very heartfelt and pretty intense uh, transparent verse uh, i do think this track in its entirety gets so swallowed up in dom giving this passionate angry delivery and this message back to amir van but i think matt champion's verse on this track goes really under the radar because he doesn't really address the same things but in a lot of ways he gets just as intimate as and just as personal I've got Jessica Pratt with her silent song, which I like to compare to extraterrestrial folk music, and it sounds amazing. It sounds fantastic. No matter what setting, when I listen to it, it hits me in the exact same way. Sitting on a rock by myself, moonlit night, Angel comes out of nowhere, grabs my hand, tells me to come. I don't know to where, but I'm going. Her voice seems so careful as not to step on any eggshells. It's like silently traversing the land, but at the same time, so noticeable. It's called Silent Song. I've just figured it out. Number 10, I've got Richard Young and Raul uh, Refreeze with Neil By Mind. Strings dominate the entirety of it. And it's eight minutes long. I never thought I would sit there and listen to strings like take me in a circle, but the circle goes up, never ending, ascending, and just taking me to a higher point despite the fact that nothing technically changes, 
only sparse little instrumental detours here and there, but it all manages to swirl or fall back into this cycle. Now my mind. Myself, the piano and, and, and the strings here are playing Ring Around the Rosie, but the game actually never stops. At track number nine, I've got Shura with the stage. Seemingly, but very respectfully, seems to uh, emulate very slight vocal passages from people like uh, Janet Jackson and also fuses it very beautifully with this like dreamy, spacey synth pop. If I could describe this song best and later on to describe his album, I will just call it cinematic soul music done beautifully. How it can apply to more than just a relationship and it can be the story of your breakup. It can be the story of a lost relative. It can be the story of a lost friend, a tale of someone you actually miss that's still alive. But the fact that you no longer speak to them makes you feel this way. Moments, bright spots in between, but very dark moments at the same time. And so difficult to describe because it, it, it really feels so emotional. At number seven, I've got Sloss and Malone with Off Me and or The Wake part one and two. Well, this track starts off like almost completely separate and like devoid of any real direction or intention. And then everything just manages to fall into one bucket, one basket of sounds that completely work together from jazz to soul to hip hop and it all just fuses in this one little bucket that it drowns into. There are many peaks of horns that get shut down by massive bass. I don't know how it happened or how it how he did it and made it sound very comforting, but he did. Despite the collage of sound that's going on all around it, it still has a massive groove to it. And I love it for that reason alone. Track number six with JPEG Mafia, Forgive Me Jesus, I Am A Thought. Absolutely love how tempestuous this song sounds. It sounds like random moments and peaking of a hurricane as I've described in my initial review for this song. Uh, coming in, peering in, and then leaving, and then you get these brief moments of R&B that pop in where Peggy's able to describe himself in different terms, almost like you're in the middle of the eye of the storm where it's at its calmest, and then the remainder of the storm comes and hits you again with the remainder of the track. And I liken the song again to kind of a metamorphosis, an insect molting, something trying to break out of an old shell. These moments of intensity followed by moments of calm just completely complement one another so well. And in the context of the rest of the album, it sounds fantastic. Amen. I just heard him say, you know my shooter a proper dime. Track number five, I've got Freddie Gibbs in Mad Lib. Palm Olive with Killer Mike and Pusha T. This is one of the greatest songs I think I've ever heard come from Freddie Gibbs in the best feature performance Freddie get or, or, or Pusha T has ever given. I think I'm probably wrong, but this is up there. It's crackling, yelping soul sample in the back while it seems as if they're sitting down in a powdery room clouded with all the coke that they've cooked. I'm supposed to be against this type of thing, but I really want to see the movie. These scars are the only real proof they couldn't kill gods. My cocaine is still sketching out my memoir. Way more chemical than political. PTSD from what I wait on the digital. Obama opened his doors. No, I was a criminal. Took a road trip to a Motel 6. Get it wholesale and you know I won't sell shit. Man. Man. Track number four on the list is Duran Jones and the Indications. Now, a lot of y'all probably already knew this was going to be up there. It's on the wall already. But still, Jesus, this song was fantastic. It doesn't do much with what 70 Soul is supposed to be. But it doesn't mess it up at all. This song is beautiful. This song is fantastic. If you love 70 Soul, you'll love this song. I love soul music. I'm a big fan. That's all that needs to be said. Stands a woman, right? Stands a exactly. Woman accused. love soul music it reminds me that like i'm alive and uh it gives me such a comfort zone really it does number three on the list 
We've got FKA Twigs with Cellophane. This song is fantastic, it's beautiful, but most of all, in context to her album Magdalene, it's vulnerable. And that's a place that I don't think many singers, especially that use their voice primarily to show their, I, I guess their craft, most of their presence lies within their vocal capability. I don't think that's a very comfortable space for many artists to sit in at all, but she finds the way for the entirety of this record to sit there and capture how broken and fragmented and lost she truly is. I haven't seen someone sound so desperate and confused musically in so long and, and, and just capture that and release it. I want to protect what she had to compare it to something as ingy as cellophane. Beautiful, grand, it's so classy and emotional. It's such a performance. I'm not used to feeling the performance like this. Everything mixed in like a stuttering piano even at, at a certain moments. The the synths that are so brief, but they, they, they like, it's like somebody's taking the synths by the foot and like dragging them in and then pushing them back out. But there were two songs this year that I liked better. And the second placement on the list for top 50 goes to Why Is Blood with Movies. Movies is the most cinematic Movies is the most cinematic lack of control I think I've ever heard in like the last six or seven years or so. This track is like acknowledging your demise and, 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 and being a commentator towards it, being a spectator of it, not being able to do anything about it, but just sit there and watch. It's like you're using yourself as 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 the case study watching either the creation or the destruction the rise or the fall of yourself with no say so whatsoever it's like watching the creation and the birth of a planet just accepting and, and commentating on everything that's happening without putting your own biases or choices into anything it's a fantastic and magnificent piece on development without interruption without interference I think that's beautiful. Cinematic loss of control and interference is the best way I know how to describe this song. And I absolutely love it from start to finish. But I do have a number one. And I played this song probably three, 400 times this year. It's Dram with her and Andrew Watt. One of the most gorgeous ballads I've heard the decade, in the decade, in the decade, no question. They've single-handedly captured what an orgasm feels like. And I don't mean that as a joke, I'm serious. The climax of this song, during the hook, the chorus with her and without, and then the moments where we hear the guitar solo are fantastic and they describe intimacy musically in a way that cannot be described by any other. I get transparent with y'all for a second because earlier, you know, I'm not gonna do that. I almost did, but I got scared immediately after I said that. Um, this song is a troublemaker. This song is an emotional roller coaster, but it's complicated by attraction this song is the definition of infatuation meeting horniness guitar solo at the end is fantastic it's magnificent her at one point matches the strings of the guitar to further paint the intensity of this building orgasmic experience and even if you don't want to look at the song like that for the musical quality that it has by itself i cannot and will not overlook the beautiful guitar solo at the end of this song but outside of that, if you just wanted to listen for Dram and her, the song is beautiful for that reason alone. I don't think I've heard a better song this year. This is what I'm going to stick to. It is my favorite 
I don't care what you say. Who was on drums? And that's my top 50 songs of 2019. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you next time. I'm going to go listen to all these again. I had a great year. All right. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Leave your favorites in the comment section down below. And I'm out. Bye.